Hello, fun. My name is Nick, and I'm here at the Midwest Regional in Chicago with Team 2383 Ninjaneers. They're already off to an incredibly strong start this season, serving as the South Florida Regional Finalist Captains. The robot has a ton of incredible automation on board, driving tons of unique features. All this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Now we're going over to Brandon to talk about the mechanics of the robot. Hello everyone. So we have a lot going on on this robot that's pretty unique to our team. Uh, the first thing I'd like to point out is probably the simplest one. Uh, the simplest thing we could have thought of is our climber. Uh, we have a winched climber, but the best part is uh, we have a fence latch right at the bottom that clicks in, and this will go nowhere for the rest of the competition. Uh, I don't think we've had one time where we've been on the chain and have fallen off just because we have a fence gate on our robot. Uh, next up, the thing we prototyped the most is our shooter. Uh, there's a lot unique about this shooter. Uh, I think the most unique would be our side spinner. Uh, not only does this help index the note into our shooter wheels, but it helps add spin to it to give us that straight shot without any side to side wobble. On top of that, we have the offset wheels that will provide somewhat of a counter spin uh, to counteract this spin and it keeps us on a straight shot with spin still going. Also how we score amp with that, if you wanna get Henry to show you, we have this second set of wheels and what happens is the note will come out of here, hit the back of the amp, hit the top of the amp, and then get quickly sucked down by these wheels. It's a great system because it's reliable, it's fast, and it doesn't get in the way of our regular shooting, and it's fixed, so it doesn't add a doff. Absolutely. One thing I'm always I'm curious about, it's packaged extremely well. Was there a way you got there, or did it just kind of start packaged well from the beginning and it just stayed that way? Well, uh, the packaging is actually from, we used to have a second feeder down here, uh, and. Our, our philosophy is we wanted to be very versatile. We wanted to feed and shoot from both sides. And what ended up happening is we realized it wasn't as necessary as we thought. Shooting from both sides is, we believe, but feeding from both sides is uh, more of a, of a cost than a, than a reward. So we took that second feeder off and now we're a little more open, but we still have that very compact design of that double feeder uh, like mechanism. Um, also, one more thing I wanted to point out about our shooter is uh, our anti-gravity cable, more of an added gravity cable. Uh, what this does is because we have a very light shooter, uh, it is, it's hard to control because we use our motors so little to move it because they also have a 60 to 1 reduction. So we added this cable to provide 30 pounds of downforce at the shooter and it kind of amplifies gravity, if you like to say. Yeah, that's very cool and seems useful. Now we're going over to Ethan to talk about their sensing and automation. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Ethan. So if you come over to this side of the robot, you can see we have a limelight mounted in front of the robot. And what this limelight doing is that it's running a peace detection program that allows us to detect the notes on the field. So this allows the robot to, re to locate where the note is on the field and automatically drive towards the note. So when our robot is all the way on the other side of the field, it allows the driver to easily feed in and pick up notes because everything's automated and it will automatically drive towards the note to pick up that note. Uh, in addition, inside our feeder, we have a mounted a green break across so that we can detect the presence of a note. We did the same thing in our indexer so that we can detect where the note is inside the robot. This allows the whole feeding sequence to be automated and the driver just have to press one single button. So Henry's going to do a small demonstration with the feeding. As you can see, when the feeder is going in, it automatically pivots and intakes it into the indexer. And what we've actually done with our controller is that it initiates a buzz to the controller, so the driver knows that the note has been intake. Now we're gonna showcase one of our feature, which is our partial intake. So as you can see, once a note is intaked, it stores in the robot, and our beam brake detects the presence of the note. So it stops the intake, and we're able to steal notes on the field really fast with this feature. And once the driver press the full intake that sends it into the indexer, it also initiates the automated sequence and puts it in the indexer. That's very cool. Um, I'm almost wondering like, did you have any issues implementing this stuff or did it just work well? Because it's 
it seems like a lot of different yeah. moving pieces. Yeah, so in the first version of robot, our prototype robot that ran at SoFlo, we actually didn't have knee brakes on a robot. And we were having some difficulties where the notes were dropping inside the robot or there would not be intakes correctly. But once we had the addition of the beam, uh, the beam brake to uh, detect the presence of the note, everything was automated and it was a lot easier for the driver to see the notes on the field. That's, yeah, that's very cool. Now we're heading over to Henry to talk about their April tag localization and simula simulation work. Yeah, so something that we've wanted on our robots since last season um, when they first introduced April tags was the ability to sense April tags from most areas on the field. So this season we decided on uh, April tag cameras mounted onto our swerve modules. You can see that our two different mounts are at different angles on this side of the robot. So this one is pointing forward and at a very steep angle. This is used when we're very close to the subwoofer. And this one is more angled in and at a shallower angle. This is when we're further away from the subwoofer so that we have just a better overall field of view. Um, these cameras are connected to two different V-Link mini PCs on the robot that control our localization that then sends the localization results over to the robot so that we can get these beautiful um, recordings after the match and we can use it to automatically shoot into the speaker during the match. So this is one of our uh, matches at the Tallahassee Regional and you can see that we have very robust localization throughout the entire match when we're near the speaker. And that brings us into simulation and logging. Um, something that we focus very heavily on this season is the logging in our robot code. So we use advantage kit. So every value that the robot takes in is logged. So we can modify code after the match and replay actual match logs in that to see what could have gone better during the match. And we can run full 3D simulation with our CAD, um, not on the field. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, engineers, thank you so much for your time. I wish you the best of luck going into the rest of the into the rest of this event. We've had an incredible season thus far, and I hope you the best. Thanks for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.